Love it. All right, all right fans. I'm here with the 2019 Voice Division Champion in the 51st Ooh. Annual Karate Championships, Mr. Jacob Bertrand. Hello, Jacob. How are you today? What's up, man? Good to meet you. I'm doing great. I like that intro. I am the most recent champ, so let's go. I mean, of course, and <laughs> you earn it. Uh, it was quite a challenge for you, uh, for Eli, <laughs> of course. Uh, we're recording this interview early in the morning. How has your day started? Uh, it's been pretty good. I've had a, uh, I've had one other interview so far. Um, yeah, very excited for the day. It's very nice outside. I went on a, a little walk right before this. So. Well, that sounds good. Um, so let's talk a little bit about, uh, you know, your character, uh, Eli, better known as Hook in uh, Cobra Kai. Uh, mm -hmm. At the beginning of season five, Eli gets a lotus flower tattoo, a symbol for a new beginning. Talk us yeah. through that new beginning, please. Yeah, so I think at the start of season five, you know, Eli has had a lot of growth throughout all these seasons. You know, he kind of started very lost and then he sort of found himself but had too much power and it very much corrupted him and he was manipulated into being you know this kind of like shadow assassin type kid um and i think through just like being surrounded by, by people who really love him he's kind of realized who he is who he needs to be and um i think after winning the tournament um there's this sort of pressure and sense of urgency of like okay like i'm gonna be a role model like people are looking up to me i'm gonna start doing the right thing like i'm walking a new path um and so i think it's very much just a reminder for him to like hey you know what we came from point a but you know we're still trying to get to point b and you're kind of a new person at this point so. yeah season five um also sees a development in the relationship between hook and Kenny, especially since you two yeah. get to to clash on several occasions, um, you know. Before we go into details about that relationship, what was the most challenging fight to shoot? Definitely the last fight with Kenny. That was um. There's a I do this big like jumping kick called a phalong. It's like a crescent with a push kick, and it's all in midair. Um, that was really, really hard for me to get down. I don't even think I could do it right now. <clears throat> right now, if I stretched out and like the conditions were perfect, um, it was just hard. You have to jump so high and get so much momentum just off of like one little half turn. Um, that was really, really hard. But by the end of it, I feel like I could do it pretty decently and it came out pretty well. But that was definitely the hardest one. Um, I recently interviewed uh dallas uh dallas, oh, yeah, yeah. you know okay i asked him to show me the silver bullet uh punch <laughs> I, I won't ask <laughs> you to, yeah to to show me your special move though since you know oh yeah this is where you get hit with the silver bullet punch so that's that's what you that's what you need <laughs> okay <laughs> um you know, Hook and Kenny had that fight. You know, you before during that fight, you dropped a fantastic line. It's time to uncage the hook. How good was it? Uh yeah, it was awesome. You know, I love getting to have stuff like that. Like this show is so much fun and it's so, you know, serious, but doesn't take itself serious, you know. Um, yeah, stuff like that's super fun. I mean, unfortunately, uncaging the hawk wasn't enough, and I still lost, but hopefully for the world tournament i can just beat up about beat up on some random uh ransom random people from around the world at least i don't think i did justice to that line uh, to me it looks fantastic can you <laughs> please tell us though oh you want me to say it yes yes oh, please. i got you sancho and cage the hawk <laughs> amazing yeah. <laughs> yeah, i'm growing i'm growing it out right now trying to trying to get um you told me that you lost that fight and, uh, you know, it that way it went down. But still, we can say that it wasn't a fair fight. The referee was corrupted. Um, do you expect Hawk to get some uh, retaliation over Kenny, though, in, in the future? I think I think the point that Hawk's at in his life, I don't really think he holds a grudge against Kenny. I think, you know, 
just how in a lot of the scenes Robbie's saying like I know how Crease can get in your head and all these things like so I mean so does like so does Hawk you know he went through all that stuff and he was one of the first people to kind of get out um when he did um so I I don't really think he holds a grudge against Kenny I think if you know there's an opportunity to kick his ass he probably will but if there's an opportunity for him to you know be passive I think it's just as likely for him to do that it really just depends on the weather honestly I don't think it's really a grudge thing I think Hawk just likes fighting and the, what's going on with that body victim uh, situation you know at the beginning of the series in general not of course not season five the beginning of Cobra Kai Eli was this bullied boy you know but still he developed and he grew but when he got that confidence he transitioned and transformed into a bully though he yeah uh, overestimated um where is he now do you think that he found that uh, you know balance in his life and in his mindset i think he's definitely taken a big step back you know like he he's realized his power um i think he realized the line that he crossed and he's just kind of like working backwards to try to make everything good um I definitely don't view him as a bully now. I think he's overall just trying to uphold whatever in his mind is like the piece. Um, but yeah, I, I think he definitely had that arc of bullied to bully. And now he's like, okay, where where do I fall in, in this? Uh, you know, you have been working with your Cobra Kai, with your fellow Cobra Kai actors for five years. Uh, yeah. I was I was curious to know: Do you still do anything to build your chemistry as a group? Um, I guess so. Yeah. Um, I mean, me, Sholo, and Joe, we live together whenever we film. Um, I hang out with Gianni all the time. Uh, yeah, I think that like the whole cast, we definitely like have like, oh, like let's everyone let's go to the park and like we'll hang out and you know. I feel like you definitely hear horror stories of like, oh my God, like, and on this show, they hated each other and da da da. Like, we genuinely don't have that. And I'm very grateful for that because I suck at drama. Um, so, yeah, no, I'd say, uh, yeah, everyone's really tight and everyone's very genuine, which, which I appreciate. Is there someone in particular with whom you bonded on the set? Um, 100%. Yeah. Sholo at the very beginning. Um, you know, we were kind of the two young kids on set. And yeah, I don't know, even just from like the first couple of times we filmed, like we really hit it off. Um, yeah. And then season two, we hung out constantly. Season three is like, all right, like you and me, let's live together. We're adults now. We can do this. Uh, yeah. Season three, four, five, we live together. Um, no, it's been great. I mean, he's like a, he's like a brother to me now. You know, we have a podcast together called Lone Lobos. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's super fun. We're, yeah, I love that kid. That, that's good to hear. Um, listen, did you have a saying in uh, Hawk's uh, look and appearance? No, not at all. <laughs> when I first booked the role, I had no idea that there was a Hawk. I, I thought I was only Eli, and then I found out that I was going to have a Mohawk. I found out I was going to have to kiss people and break people's arms, and it was all news to me, and I got told in like the span of like a 20-second conversation. I was like, what? What do you mean? I need more information than this. Um, but yeah, not. I usually don't have a ton of input on like what happens with my hair or stuff like that. The writers have, you know, they're the big brain writers. They they know all. They have like this whole scheme in their head. So we kind of we kind of follow along. Were you satisfied or were you happy with the fact that the Mohawk is uh, returning? Mohawk? Yeah, I I I, th I think I am. Um I definitely don't think uh Eli needs the Mohawk, but I am happy he's getting it back. I think he's doing it more out of nostalgia and like, you know what? Like, I like myself with the Mohawk. This is who I am. Like, this is why I'm bringing this back. I don't think it's for any sort of, uh, you know, power trip reason or anything like that. Are you into combat sports uh, at all? Yeah. Um, you know, filming Cobra Kai, we hang out with stunt guys all the time. And coincidentally, they're all very much into UFC. And so I've been following UFC quite a bit. Um, I just started watching one um, 
but yeah, no, it's been super. I mean, we even had, you know, Tyron Woodley and Wonderboy Thompson, Stephen Thompson uh, on this season. I got to train with Tyron quite a bit. He's a super, super awesome guy. Uh, yeah, I, I interviewed him. He He's pretty cool. But I, I would like to, to ask you if you, you know, if you could be a combat sports fighter in real life, who would you be? Who would I be? Yes. Gosh, literally anyone. Um, probably Adesanya. Israel Adesanya is going down easy. I don't care if he has, you know, you know, eight inches on me. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter when I'm punching you in the face. Oh, yeah, he's done. <laughs> totally. Doesn't stand a chance against me. <laughs> that that would, be, would be quite a fight, yeah. Uh, uh, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Jacob, before I let you go, uh, what's about your future projects? Uh, what are you working on currently? Oh, oh um, there's actually a cool animated show on HBO Max coming out. I think, oh, shoot, what's the date? I don't even know if the date, if I'm allowed to say the date or not. Well, if it's under embargo. Oh, yeah, just... yeah it's, uh, it's, it's a DC show. Um, it's called Bat Wheels. It's like, um, it's oh, a kid's it has, show. It has been uh, already announced, I believe. Oh, boom. All right, cool. There we go. Show us how much time here um yeah no it's super cool i play the batmobile my name is bam um it's a very very fun show it looks beautiful it's it's amazing um so i'm very uh i'm very excited for that to come out for people to watch it yeah it, it, i watched the the trailer actually and of course i mean you just voiced the, that character but still you get to kick some asses in gotham city i mean come on Heck yeah <laughs> Uh, I finished my question. Do you have uh, any last messages? Um, no, just thanks for the interview, dude. I appreciate it. You were really awesome. <laughs> thank you very much. I got some really interesting uh, answers. Uh, thank you for giving us a little bit of your time today. Best of luck with all your projects. And hopefully I'll hear again from you in the future. Yeah, see you soon. Have a nice one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.